Welcome to Empowered by Iron, the podcast for female strength athletes by female strength athletes. We are your hosts, Dr. Kristen Lander from Fiercely Fueled Nutrition Coaching and Mary Morton, PhD candidate and weightlifter. Together, we are Empowered by Iron. Welcome to this week's episode of Empowered by Iron. In today's episode, we're going to be talking all about protein, um, specifically how much you need, the research behind the recommended amounts, and what happens when you consume more than you need. So we talked a little bit about protein and muscle protein synthesis a few episodes back. I think it was episode 68. Um, But we really wanted to do a much deeper dive into the current sports nutrition research. Um, And the reason for this, we've found over the last few years working with athletes that people are eating way too much protein, which is not in line with the current research or the last decade of research really in sports nutrition. Um, And so this is important because, you know, we've all heard that eating too much protein can, can harm your kidneys or whatever. This is a myth. This is not true. We all know now this is not true. It's not harmful to your health to consume too much protein, but it is harmful to your performance as an athlete to consume more protein than you need. So we're going to get into a little bit about why that happens and what to do about it. So Mary, take it away. Tell us what is a protein first off. All right. Um, Yeah. So like most of the research that's been done, I will say before we dive into this, that has been done for the fitness industry has simply been done on non-athletes. So a lot of these studies are done on obese populations and that doesn't necessarily recapitulate what happens to athletes. So um, they're getting better about it though. I will say that a lot of the studies, not a lot, but a majority of the studies now kind of look at athletes when they say athletes. Um, so anyway, okay. Yeah, I kind of, I actually, I actually talk about that a little bit that like, so there's this whole broad category of nutrition, right? That there's tons of research on. And then there is like a little smaller subsection of that is sports nutrition. And then even smaller than that is sports nutrition for athletes. And then a little bit is sports nutrition for strength athletes and so much of the stuff that's out and there. Then, and then even that is like a little bit like, okay, what about women? That- <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and there are more studies recently uh, that are being done for women, which is super exciting. But um, yeah, so much of the research out there is um, not even necessarily on obese people, but just on that it's geared towards someone who is going to to the gym for the first time or after a long break. And they are really just kind of general fitness population trying to lose weight. And we don't, as athletes, need to be following those recommendations that that things that worked for them because they may really hinder our performance. Right, exactly. So a lot of these nutrition studies, if you're reading them, just make sure you understand who they are geared towards. Yes. Okay, so what the fuck is a protein? So a protein is actually a chain of amino acids, both essential and non-essential, linked together in the body through what are called peptide bonds. These amino acids, as I said, can be non-essential, which means your body can make these, and then essential amino acids, which is what we hear a lot about in the whole strength industry, are the amino acids your body cannot make, and therefore you must intake through your diet somehow. As I said before on our macronutrient episode, which I'll uh, be sure to link below that we did. I mean, we think we did it forever ago, Kristen. Well, we also did the one where we said what, like, what is a muscle and how do you grow a muscle? That was recent. Yeah. It was one of the two, but the thing that one of those I talked about was a protein is not just fucking muscle. Okay. Protein is not limited to just muscle. Every single biological reaction that occurs in your body requires a protein of some kind, whether that be an enzyme or a structural protein. Protein is not just muscle. So when I I know that most of us, when we hear protein, we think, okay, muscle, but protein is required for all of your bodily functions. So, and then... So in your body uses a lot of protein. I mean, it's... I mean, you have so many, you've got... 
I mean, you probably have a billion reactions going on in your body at one particular moment in time. And all of those reactions require a protein of some kind. So protein is not just muscle. And a lot of the research is looking at, well, how much protein extra do you need in order to stimulate muscle protein synthesis? Right. And then the last thing I will say is that protein is not a primary energy source for your body. Protein, especially if it's in an enzyme form, actually uses energy in order to carry out reactions. Although some pro- like your body can use protein for energy, it is not the primary source of energy. Right. So the dietary protein that you consume, if you didn't consume, if you are a complete lack of carbohydrates and fats, your body could utilize protein for energy, but it is certainly not effective source of energy and is not the preferred source. Your body has certain pathways that it's going to utilize and pathways that are easier for it to utilize than others. And using protein for energy is definitely not preferred. Yeah. So, all right, let's get into then what the research shows strength athletes need. And Probably um, at least three grams per (laughs) pound of body weight per day. Is that correct? (laughs) Because I need to eat 300 grams of protein every day. Uh, Yeah, we've we've really found that um, particularly with our Eat for Strength group, um, these we've got 25 ladies in this group and a lot of them came from various other programs and were counting macros on their own and doing different stuff. And a lot of them were eating way too much protein um and it's something that we always knew occurred but when we saw it happening on such this on such a big scale um at one time it really was alarming to us so um yeah the current research shows that strength athletes need about one and a half to two grams per kilogram of body weight per day. So actually one and a half to 2.4, I think was the actual number in the research, um, in the meta that's, there's a lot of meta analysis out there on this. Um, so one thing that I think is really interesting is that in terms of fat loss, if you're trying to lose fat, um, people always say consume more protein, right? Like eat, eat, really, really high protein. So we've got people that are eating um, well over, you know, one pound, one gram per pound of body weight, which equates to, you know, more than 2.2 grams per kilogram a day. If you do the math on that, Um, we find that in terms of fat loss, eating one and a half grams of protein per kilogram a day is actually better than eating 2.4 grams per kilogram, which was really surprising to me. Um, So the research that, that talks about this doesn't explain why this happens. And I'm, I'm assuming that research researchers probably don't know why at this point this, this happens. Right. They probably Um, just got data and they were like, Oh, that's data. Let's do it. Interesting. Yeah. Um, So I, I, if I think back to what the research showed that it was, they looked at, um, so the, the, the RDA amount of protein that's recommended, which is 0.8 grams per kilogram, just for the average person. Um, you guys need to know that RDA amounts are always the minimum amount needed, um, not necessarily the optimal amount, but the minimum amount. So that's 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight a day. And um, they so they looked at one time RDA, they looked at two times RDA, which was the 1.5 grams, and then three times RDA, which was 2.4 grams. And they found that the the groups that were in the 1.5 gram per kilogram and the groups that were in the 2.4 grams per kilogram, they did lose, they did have more fat mass loss over a period of time than the 0.8 grams per kilogram a day group. However, the 1.5 gram per kilogram group lost like 6% more fat mass than did the higher protein amount, which is fascinating. And so why does that happen? Well, I speculate that that, that, I mean, this is a huge speculation, but I think part of it has to do with, um, if you, which gets into why you shouldn't eat more than you need is basically if you are, if you, so you, 
you can only have a set number of calories each day, right? Or you're going to be in a caloric surplus and then you're going to be gaining weight, which if that's what you want to do, fine. But if that's not your goal, then, you know, you've got this set amount of calories that you can consume in a day. When you are consuming more protein than what your body needs, you're taking away from those other sources of food that give you energy, like carbohydrates and fat. So um, I speculate that potentially these people that were in the higher protein group, they weren't getting enough energy from their food and maybe were because they were all going through a resistance training program. I think it was 12 weeks. Um, I think maybe they weren't able to train as hard. That's my guess, right? That's what's going to happen. It's actually a really good guess. I think that they probably didn't have enough energy, as much energy as the other group to get through their workouts. Yeah, That's so what I would guess. They're probably, their uh, exertion and their actual, uh, the actual amount of strength or whatever they were actually to put in each training session was less just simply because they're fucking tired. Exactly, exactly. Because we know carbohydrates are what your body wants to use for energy. It's the easiest source of energy for your body. It Mm -hmm. will use fat for energy if it has to. And then secondarily is protein. So if you've got if you're eating double the amount of protein than what your body needs, then that's significant amount of carbohydrates and fats you're missing out on. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Because Mm -hmm. if you're eating Let's say your body can only handle, and this is just to make the numbers easy, let's say your body can only handle 100 grams of protein a day. Like That is how much protein your body can process in a day to to, to uh, contribute to muscle protein synthesis, to contribute to all your biological functions. And let's say you eat 150 grams of protein every day. That 50 grams extra really is all for naught. Right. The it doesn't benefit. Shows, there's no more no, benefit. There's no it. benefit. The research shows that if you ingest that extra protein, it's going to be turned into free amino acids circulating in your blood and whatnot. And then eventually you just pee it out. Like it, it's just gone. Like your body cannot process more than a certain amount. In fact, one study looked, ooh, I just punched my mic. Oops. <laughs> Getting worked up over there. Oh. One study looked at the effect of protein when consumed in three or four times the that 0.8 range um, in college strength athletes. So these are young individuals who really should be able to put on good muscle if properly um, nourished and have a good program to follow. The study found that there was no benefit, zero benefit in terms of strength, in terms of endurance, in terms of everything, weight, weight loss, weight gain. There's no benefit to eating three or four times the recommended amount of protein. You just, you just lose what you don't use. Yeah, exactly. It's that, so it's not, it doesn't harm you. It's not going to be harmful to you. That used to be, that used to be the thing all the time. It's like, oh, you're going to have like kidney failure. No, if you have an underlying. We've talked about that before. If you have an underlying kidney condition, like I'm sure you're about to say. That was exactly what I was about to say. (laughs) That's the words out of my mouth. (laughs) But, um, right. So it's not harmful. It's just not helpful. And when we're talking about sports performance, you need to make sure that everything that you are putting in your body is working for you, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's the whole point of specifically, if you're looking at your macronutrient breakdown, and you're, and you're trying to hone in on this, um, you don't want to be consuming more protein than what you need, because it's just, it's just hindering your performance. In fact, you know, probably nobody that listens to this, this podcast is an endurance athlete, but maybe some of you do both. Um, There was a study that showed, um, they looked at a time trial, um, a time trial cycling event. Um, and they had, uh, some, they had some cyclists who were, um, consuming, I can't recall the numbers, but the cyclists, I think it was the cyclists that were at like 2.4 grams per kilogram of body weight versus 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. The cyclists at the high end, um, performed worse after four weeks on a time trial than did the cyclists that were eating one and a half grams. And that's absolutely um, shows for them. I mean, they need, they need a lot of carbohydrates. So it was robbing their body of essentially of carbohydrates because they weren't, they weren't in a caloric surplus, right? So they just weren't eating as many carbs um, and they performed worse. So that's, 
another shocking thing um is right. that they if didn't you do... have the carbs or the the energy exactly exactly and where you know a lot of the information out there a lot of the research out there um when you read about protein and you read about muscle protein synthesis and balancing the protein um the muscle protein breakdown versus the muscle protein synthesis um and looking at all of that the the a lot of the research um where they talk about resistance training, like we said in the beginning is looking at the like weight loss fitness group and they can get away with eating less carbohydrates and less fats um, because they're not, they're not really necessarily concerned with their performance, especially not in these research studies. They're, they're not as concerned. They're looking more at how do we stimulate the best muscle protein synthesis. Um, and so the, they will sometimes really cut those, those carbs down to do that. Um, and we can't do that as athletes, which is, I'm like shocked the amount of athletes that come to us, um, eating relatively low carbohydrates and they're like, they're tired. They have no sex drive. They can't get through their training. And they think that there's like something wrong with them besides just that they're not eating enough energy. Right. Well, it's been so ingrained in basically every source you look up. It's, well, what protein are you eating? Are you getting enough protein? Is there enough protein in your diet? And if you're eating a normal meal where if you're not following a vegan diet, if you're just a normal person eating a portion of meat at basically at every meal or a portion of protein, you're probably fine. Okay. You don't yeah. need extra, extra protein. <laughs> you're you're right. fine. It's just bullshit that everyone's been feeding you to try to sell you things. And absolutely. And I find that's hilarious. You really should like when it's all said and done, having supplements is great, especially having like protein powder. It, it, it does really help in terms of aiding your recovery. However, you really should be able to do this whole thing on normal food. Like you should be able to get enough protein, enough carbs, enough fats through whole foods and some treats. Like that yeah. really should be how it is. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're having to slam like three three protein shakes a day just to get in your protein requirements, you're probably you too consuming many too you're probably trying to consume too much protein for sure. I'm a really big fan of a whey protein supplement post-training um, just because generally I don't want to eat like I don't want to eat chicken or right because we've talked about before right. it needs to be low fat um, and I it's just tastes good and it's easy so well and um, I have like I, I have soy protein powder and I use yes. it for the same reason except mine yes. tastes like shit but I mix it with fruit <laughs> and it's fine well so we're going to talk a little bit about protein quality in a minute hey everyone I am here today with Maria Rodriguez from Fear Her Fight, and she wants to tell us all about this amazing, amazing event that she's putting on on, in July, all about women, community, and hell, Maria, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, gladly. So this day is just going to allow women to be a little bit more creative if they are looking to start their powerlifting journey or start their CrossFit journey, or if they just want to know of other people that are the same as them in this community. I have a lot of people coming in um, for this event that are just beginners, that are moms who are like, I don't know what to do. I feel alone. And then I have, you know, on the opposite spectrum, I have, you know, national competitors coming in. So this is going to be a super fun day filled with strength and collaboration, community, and just really just a desire to learn. So what is this day going to look like? Is it going to be all, everyone like lifting things or are we just going to play games? Like what if someone wants to come to this, what should they expect? Yes, we're going to play Connect Four. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. So in the in the morning, what I have planned is just kind of like a mimosa bar and some sweets and coffee. So I have a local barista. She is also a woman of color. I invited her to come and share her coffee with us. And then everything I really wanted to make sure that it was local. So kind of like an intro, little breakfast 
fun, fun, fun. And then just an intro on just to meet everyone. So then I'll just kind of introduce the event and then we'll just go right into our first speaker. So who is our keynote speaker, Cece Holcomb. And so she's going to just blow everyone it's mine. I can't even, I'm just going to start crying as soon. Mm -mm. So she's going to be speaking and, you know, then we have a little bit of yoga happening. Um, Bua Berg, who is also a really great friend of mine. She's going to be leading us through a little bit of a morning flow, morning stretch, because it is going to be a, an event where we mostly just kind of sit because we're going to be listening to our speakers. Um, and then throughout there's food, there's activities. There's, um, my friend Kaylee, she has her uh, massage chair there um, for the women that want to just kind of get a 20 minute like back massage. Um, and so then after at the end of it all, we're going to have a little friendly deadlift competition. So, um, so a little bit of everything. Yes. Of yeah, course, speakers, that's fun we, and lifting. Yes. It's going to be so, so fun because that's what it is. It's, it's just not strength looks different for everyone. So I wanted to make sure that was evident. So where is this being held and where can people buy tickets? This event is in Lakewood, Washington. It's at my dear, dear friend's gym, Daniel uh, Libre, his gym, um, Northwest Strength. And tickets are available through the website, uh, www.fearherfight.com. Um, under the tab Women's Strength Summit. And tickets are $85 through brown paper tickets. And so they are a fair trade company who you can um, uh, make sure to donate through any charity you want. Um, there's a fee for that, but making sure that we also donate um, all of the proceeds from the raffle um, will be going to the Sexual Assault Center of Pierce County. So Win-win. <laughs> so this is going to happen July 15th, correct? Yes, ma'am. If someone can't make that for whatever reason, for, legitimate, for a legitimate reason, mm -hmm. because it sounds amazing, <laughs> is there any way that they can support you besides buying a ticket? Absolutely. So on our website, there is a full line of cool gear. There's tanks, long sleeves, beanies, because here in Seattle, it is still really chilly, unfortunately. Um, or there is a donation um, page that, like in this instance, where you can't go, but you really do want to help out um, Fear of Bike in this manner and the Sexual Assault Center of Pierce County, definitely that is going to be available through www.fearofbike.com. That's awesome. So everyone listening, if you're interested for this, go to fearherfight.com and buy your tickets to this amazing, amazing Women's Strength Summit. And uh, let us know how it goes. We are proud sponsors of this event. But um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the meal timing and the protein timing throughout the day. So can you talk a little bit about what the research shows us here? Yes. So we've probably all heard of various methodologies of eating. We've got the eating six times a day. We've got the intermittent fasting people. We've got the people who just uh, kind of do whatever they want. They just snack throughout the day. And very interestingly, there was a study that looked at, um, they kept protein constant and they looked at if we did one feeding a day, two feedings a day, all the way up to, I believe it was six or eight feedings a day, taking whatever that protein amount and dividing it by the number of meals per day. And they found that the the people who were given the smaller amounts of protein consistently throughout the day and the people who had huge amounts of protein a couple times a day, like twice a day, had less stimulation of muscle protein synthesis than people who ate three to four meals per day consisting of about 0.3 grams per kilogram per meal of protein, which equates to approximately 20 to 30 grams of protein uh, per meal. And you can go all the way up to five, like four to five meals, especially if you right. have like pre and post training, because that's, that's kind of different. Um, and this, the, the whole idea of especially bodybuilding diets where you eat like 10 meals a day and you're supposed to just continuously feed your system protein. Like we said, all that, all that protein just went to waste. If your body couldn't handle it, it just 
It's out. It's gone forever. So the best way that they found to prolong muscle protein synthesis, especially after resistance training, is that you eat about 20, 30 grams of protein every three to four hours. Yeah. That's it. So if you do the math on that, that's going to put us at that that right around one and a half grams per kilogram of body weight, right? Yeah. Um, so imagine that. <laughs> The science adds up. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So yeah, I mean, and this isn't to say like if you find intermittent fasting works for you, that's fine. But you have to understand what that actually is doing to your body in terms of um, if you have strength goals. Yeah. If you have weight loss goals, I, I do understand that that type of eating is fine. And I have no qualms with it. If that's If that's what you want to do and you want to resistance train, you do you, man. I'm not here to change your mind just here to give you the science. Yeah. Well, so let's get into some of the science of protein quality, which I have to say as a vegan, (laughs) this is, it's not even that like, cause I do understand that like whey protein is probably one of the best protein sources, like in terms of supplementation. Mm -hmm. But one of the most annoying things I get as a vegan is well, you just don't have the best quality protein. And I'm like, shut right. the fuck up. I am stronger than you. I will <laughs> literally punch you right now. So that, for all my vegan friends out there, you know that you know that question. Oh, but like, where do you get your protein? And food is the answer. God damn it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can talk now. <laughs> Mary doesn't get worked up about this at all. Oh, I just want to. <laughs> I just want to scream at people sometimes, but I just smile and make a little note. <laughs> Well, okay, so let's let's talk about what people are talking about when they talk about when they bring up protein quality. So protein quality literally, this is literally the definition, it refers to the level of essential amino acids in the food, okay? So the higher numbers, the higher levels of essential amino acids means that it's a higher quality protein. So a lower quality protein means it has lower levels of essential amino acids. So animal sources naturally have the highest amounts of essential amino acids. They're higher than plant sources of protein. That's just a fact. Um, the, the branch chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine are um, particularly important for driving muscle protein synthesis after resistance training. Um, and then particularly leucine is the big one um, that's, been, that's been popping up in research a lot lately. Um, well, and they found, I will say that they found, I don't know if you're going to touch on this, but if you just ingest like free forms of leucine yes. that are not in the branch chain form, it yes. doesn't stimulate mus- muscle protein synthesis this is to the same extent. Yeah, not it's not for as long. Yeah, it does stimulate it but not for as long. Absolutely. So, um so basically um what this means is if you are not a vegan, the best, you know, the best recommendation is to consume a whey protein that shows that it it's got higher levels of essential amino acids. Um, it's got more leucine in it. Um, it. Overall, it's a higher quality protein. However, if you don't want to eat animals, <laughs> don't eat animals. Um, so if it's you're con- not impossible, if you choose to eat a meat free, dairy free diet, like it is right. not impossible. Right. Is it as easy as eating a, a meat based diet? No. But can you learn how to do it and still get strong and still reach your goals? Absolutely. Right. So if you're consuming a plant-based diet, you just need to make sure. um, I think that using a protein supplement post-training that contains all of the essential amino acids is probably really big for vegans. I Um, do highly recommend that. Yeah. And so one thing, um, while soy is considered a complete protein, um, which meaning that it has all nine essential amino acids, it contains a little lower amounts um, of specifically of the branch chain amino acids than whey. Um, So it doesn't stimulate muscle protein as much. So look for a blend of plant-based protein that has a high BCAA profile and you're going to be just fine. Um, Yeah. Okay. Here's my question. And this is kind of a hypothetical. We're about to speculate, y'all. Um, if 
your body can only handle a certain amount of protein. Which and means- by handle, you mean like process, right? Because it, it can handle it. It just doesn't need it. Like it doesn't use it. Yes. Yeah. It cannot process. That's what I mean by handle. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't use all that protein anyway, at what level is the amount of branch chain amino acids not important? Like if yeah. you know what I'm saying? So if you if there is a certain level that your body can can handle or process, if you're trying to add extra on to that, does that even matter? Like is it because the whey is more? Yes, it has more, but do they do the same job if you overall eat the correct amount of protein throughout the day? Well, so that's a really good question. But so we know that the driver of muscle protein synthesis is resistance training, right? That's the driver. So, um, or one of them, it's a very strong um, stimulus. stimulus. Intended. (laughs) I actually totally didn't mean to say that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, so we know that that is a really important and strong catalyst to muscle protein synthesis. And so um, that your, your tissues are more sensitive to the uptake of protein and specifically the amino acids and more specifically the branch chain amino acids in that one hour post-exercise window. So I would say, yeah, it probably does matter to get, um, you know, as high a quality protein as you can get in, in that one hour window, because that's when your muscles are the most sensitive to taking this up. Does that answer your question? Yeah, but I will say, if you want to be vegan, yeah. it's always fine. <laughs> right, right. It's all about priorities, man. Right, well, so, right, so there are other studies out there that show that um, that ultimately it's the amount of protein that you consume throughout the day right. that is, is more important than necessarily the timing of it and whatever. So ultimately, when you're looking at this, like, just make sure that you're it's funny to say, because we always used to talk about make sure you're getting enough protein. And now I'm really realizing we need to be saying, make sure you're not eating too much protein. Make sure um, you're not taking away from the carbs that you could be having. Well, and that's the biggest thing, right? That's the biggest thing that we are seeing happening with people is that um, it's, it's, they're not fueled for their training very well because they're eating so much protein, they're displacing the the carbs and the fat. Um, you really should then- be going into your training, assuming that you had a decent night of sleep and you're not like going crazy at work. You really should be going into your training every day with a good pre-workout meal with carbs and protein. So you are energized. Like I don't feel tired during my training anymore. When I used, when I used to eat more protein and had reduced carbs, I mean, training was horrible, but now I don't have that lull in training, that lull lull in energy that causes me to have a shitty session. I mean, I eat before I eat during and I eat after and I feel fine. Like I feel amazing right? with all the extra energy. It is. It is really amazing. And especially for those of us that train, um, you know, we train high volume. We train for a long time. Our training is lasting two to two and a half hours. Um, it's you, you need that energy to get you through that training. That's what's going to get you stronger. That stimulus is what's going to drive more muscle protein synthesis because you're able to train harder. So it's not that we're saying, you know, eat low protein. This is certainly not low protein. One and a half grams per kilogram is, is still double the RDA, um, amounts, but you know, it's, it's about really, it's about getting those carbohydrates in for, um, just to give you guys an insight, like I eat 90 grams of carbs before I train and 90 grams of carbs after I train. Um, and that is, I, I know people my size that they don't even eat that many carbs in a day <laughs> and they're wondering why they can't get through training and I feel terrible for them. I don't want that to happen to them. And to them we say, come to us, we help you. Yeah, exactly. It's like finding the right amount of protein is kind of like Goldilocks and the three bears. One is it's, not enough, one is too much, and one is just right. 
Exactly, which actually brings up a really interesting point is that um, Goldilocks all does. <laughs> yes, Goldilocks brings up a very interesting point. <laughs> um, is that so? Like the research is all about means, right? It's all about like the, the there was this range that showed up in our research, and we brought it down to the you know essentially an an, kind of an average, yeah. yeah. Um, And so, although my mother, the statistics professor, would be horrified if she knew I referred to mean as average, but whatever. Um, (laughs) So, um, anyway, these are starting points, right? There are outliers. There are definitely outliers in this where there are people that may need a little less protein, although I find that a little harder to believe than some people might need a little bit more protein. But, um, you know, these are really good starting points for people. And then you can kind of go based on that. But I would argue that probably not very many people need to go as high as two and a half, three, four grams per kilogram of body weight. That's yeah. too much. That's just, you're just wasting calories at that point. Right. And who wants to do that? Like I want every calorie I consume to do something for me. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Especially anything that. else, Kristen? No, I mean that's it. That's that's protein in a nutshell. So um, I'm sure we're going to get some flack for this. <laughs> Probably, but there's a know, lot of there's a lot of money in this industry that's is, pushing but this. The beautiful thing about us and you listening to this podcast is like I'm not trying to sell you anything. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I just want you to be the best athlete that you possibly can be. And if that means buying a supplement, that means buying a supplement. If that means eating less of something, that means eating less of something. That's just what that is. But if you have questions for us or you want us to clarify something or you're interested in coaching, um, you can reach out to us at empoweredbyiron at gmail.com. Um, and don't forget, we have a Patreon Um it's a monthly support. It helps support the podcast. We also have a Facebook group page, Women's Strength uh, hyphen Athlete Resource, or Women in Strength, sorry, hyphen Athlete Resource. And you can ask the questions there too. We have a lot of women in there who would benefit from any questions of that nature. Uh, yeah. Anything else? Nope. No, that's it. You guys have an awesome day and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.